Welcome to Dr. Justin Rant, and I'm gonna rant about this sorry mess. It's from Polygon. Of course, the, um, the news outlet that was created to announce and talk about games to known gamers. Because none of the writers in this rag actually play games. Anyway, let's go and read the article. Dungeons & Dragons kicks off 2021 with its first wheelchair accessible dungeon. Ah, inclusion now within the Dungeons & Dragons universe. Okay, now that's a bit odd. Why would you actually add a wheelchair accessible dungeons? <clears throat> Isn't this... That for... Yeah. Isn't this a bit retarded? <laughs> oh, look at these people! Hey, you goblin filthy goblin! Go on there! <laughs> and make sure this dungeon is wheelchair accessible! So next time a hero comes in and looting for the sake of looting, uh, gets to go and be accessible and wheelchair compliant dungeon! <laughs> Seriously? Seriously, the villain, the villain, the evildoer, or if you prefer, something like that, a lech, or some other, uh, I don't know, demonic entity or something that you cook up for being the final boss or something of the dungeon, and he actually has the care and the mentality of making a wheelchair accessible dungeon. That's next level stupidity. That's next level retardedness. That's next level of bullshit. And besides, if you have certain uh, mobility problem or something like that, why would you base your entire identity on your disability? And to the point that you want to roleplay your, um, your disability in a game to escape... <clears throat> In a game that you use to escape your reality, you want to in to portray yourself as a cripple inside the game? Are you really insane? There are magic spells that regenerate or um, limbs and other things inside the game. But even more so, and this is I'm not even going to judge the new rules because then I, I think it's the fifth edition that I pretty much just say fuck this, don't care anymore. But won't this cause a mobility problem? Because, you know, uh, halflings and all the things like that, when tiny little beings have a strength penalty, at least when the game used to be good. Now, today, those things do not have a ratio problems or <clears throat> bonus or, or bad uh, things or negative points based on race. Jesus Christ, this is what happens, this is what happens when you don't gatekeep people from entering your, your hobby. This is what happens when you let idiots who are more interested in politics and being a woke little shits get inside of your hobby. Not only you get kicked out of your own hobby that you've played your whole life, you also get kicked out and your hobby get destroyed, destroyed, completely and utterly destroyed by these people, because you are a sexist piece of shit if you don't bend down and change the rules for those morons who can't even play games. Alright, let's read the article, because it's bad. You know what? The last two days I've shot more than I ever thought possible. And even... And he, and reading this article on the idea behind it beats the amount of shit that I've shot. So, you know, it's bad. Anyway, the next Dungeons & Dragons bo book published by Wizards of the Coast will include the franchise's first official adventure that is wheelchair accessible, titled Candle Keep Mysteries. Oh, it's cute name! The collection of 17 one-shot adventures will be published on March 16th and will feature the work of 19 different designers. Damn it! God damn it. 
fuck? I didn't get the goddamn filthy uh, mosquito. Now my blood is gonna get sucked because of this little bullshit of God damn it. <clears throat> the joys of living in a hot, filthy shithole. Either way, let's go. Kondo Keep Mysteries will be different from any other book released so far, the fifth edition of D&D. God, I hate this edition. Rather than a single campaign that takes characters from level 1 through level 5 or 10, it's a collection of much shorter unconnected experiences, one which will be designed to serve as a one-shot common turn for an adventure suitable for just one gameplay session, between 2 and 4 hours. It may actually take longer than that. <clears throat> they also share a common theme, a books! The quote originated out of the need to provide dungeon masters with short adventures that they can easily integrate into their Forgotten Realms campaign or into any campaign, really, that hands in at a library, quote, end quote, sorry, said Chris Perkins, D&D principal story designer in a press briefing, quote, it, each adventure is built on the premise of the characters finding a book. Uh, the book is what propels a mystery, a mystery that the character feels compelled to solve, which then leads them on a grand adventure, end quote. Oh my god. It feels like one of those teenager movies or shows or something like that. I don't know why. Yeah. The coffee is over. And I still have an article to read. Fuck me. For the past several years, Wizards of the Coast has been welcoming more and more freelance designers into the fold. Yeah, that's a problem. You're not having quality control. The Dungeon Masters Guild, built in partnership with One Bookshelf, makers of the di drive through RPG, <coughs> it also offers revenue sharing with independent creators. Perkins tapped into this burgeoning ecosystem of new voices, as well as the wider freelance marketplace to build the team behind Candlekeep Mysteries. Authors include, in the f uh, include the following. Oh, you goddamn it. <clears throat> you know what? Who, who wants to bet that the quite a few of those idiots over here actually have uh, pronouns on their Twitter bios? Hmm? Who wants to bet? I'm definitely not gonna click or even share anything like that because, um, you know, these people, how they are. If you show any disagreement or any criticism towards their way, they'll think it's harassment. It's like a death threat or something to their view. So please don't go contact them, so that's why I'm not even gonna touch it. Anyway, among the designers on hand to give the press preview of their contribution was actor and producer Jennifer Kretschmer, part of the Silver and Steel actual playgroup. Last summer, Crashman put lots of energy into creating the accessibility in games resources. Uh, virtual signal received, by the way. She said it was important for her to make sure that her adventure was available to everyone. Well, this is not something that's new to the top tabletop gaming or the new D&D, but it was important to me to make accessibility part of my dungeons. And quote, oh. This victory signal has been completely and totally received. The signal quality is also very, very retarded. Congratulations! Anyway, Cratchman said, and quote, as an, as an ambulatory wheelchair user, I wanted the people to have the opportunity to see themselves represented in-game. We have the ability in fantasy to imagine things. We don't have to pay to make those accommodations. This is something we can imagine in our brains, and it's there. So it's something that was really important to me to put in into my design. And quote, go on, make it your own dungeon. Just don't do this. But really, what sort of evil megalomaniac who, who creates liches or whatever, or I don't know, armies of or, orcs or trolls or something like that? 
of skeletons or walking skeletons will actually care about the mobility of its dungeon. For wheelchair use, seriously, what sort of... It just breaks logic, it breaks immersion. Because, quite frankly, I think that an evildoer would actually care more about making sure their dungeon is as inhospitable, inhospitable as possible to avoid any invasion or any, um, any annoying little uh, heroes getting in to not only loot, but end his, um, his quest in destroying the world. Or at least making, I mean, come on. Hey you! Hey, 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 you, you, goblin, you, dirty little goblin, go maintain that bridge over there, make sure it's wheelchair accessible. Hey, 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 make sure, <laughs> make sure it's wheelchair accessible so we don't get fined. Uh, instead of actually bothering to create more for my army to conquer the village. Seriously? Anyway, uh, in fact, there was quite a bit of a buzz about accessibility in tabl tabletop role-playing games last year. None was thanks in part to Sarah Thompson, who goes by the handle of the year. The designer and consultant created the Combat Wheelchair D&D supplement available for free online. It has since been incorporated into the official canon of Matt Mercer's Critical Role. There's even a line of figures suitable at home 3D printing from Strata Miniatures. No, really, imagine you with the wheelchair, like this, uh, wait, what in the actual fuck, they actually have a blood bag? Uh, no, no, that's, oh, that's a lantern, Jesus Christ, uh, you walk in the dungeon and you're surrounded by, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, by skeletons, and then you go on a, and you are a dwarf like this dude over here. And you have to fight him. How are you going to do that inside a wheelchair? In a fucking wheelchair. How are you going to achieve that? Sure, go on, use magic. But, um... That's a bit weird. But then again, they took out the ratio negative points of each race. That's intelligence, physical strength, and things like that, so... Being a wheelchair is just for show. You have the same abilities as somebody who is walking or something like that. I seriously do not know. Anyway, Wizard has published several, several anthologies to the 5th edition, which was a mistake, including Ghosts of Salt Marsh and Tales from the Yawning Portal. However, those books included adventures that were very much substantial and tended to be revised versions of older material. Who wants to bet that the revision includes uh, wokifying the content? Candle Keep Mysteries promises to be all new content. Most important Perkins, however, is the ability to kick off the year with creative, inspiring adventure for fans of D&D to riff on throughout 2021. What quote? What's wonderful about it is, about it is, you know, with so many adventures, you get to see a huge variety of what D&D can be. And quote, Perkins said, quote, every adventure is unique. Every adventure has got a weird twist or take. <coughs> I think that people will be able to pick up this product and find one or more things that they they are just gonna be aching to want to play to put in in their games. End quote. Hmm. Look into these things here. I don't know. Doesn't feel like it. Oh, that's why it's extra woke. It's owned by Vox Media. <laughs> it's as you'll expect. It's wokeness upon wokeness. And it's just fucking crap. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and head to minds.com for exclusive content that I cannot discuss or talk about in YouTube. So, if you want more of that exclusivity, head in there, and don't forget to upvote or share or things like that as well, because I need my content to be spread to the other underlings of the world to fall upon my beautiful magnificence. Anyway. Um, oh, yes, 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 yes. 
Good night.